parables uh, has to do with finances, money. So we're talking about something that's very much we're familiar with. It's around us. We, we, we do four basic things with it. We give, we save, we um, um, spend, we invest when it comes to uh, finances. One of the first rules as we deal with this, because this is something not just present, this is something futuristic when you deal with this. One of the first rules we try to get across to you is that God owns it all. Okay? Now, until you get to understand that, you're going to be saying, this is my money and my this and my that and my that, and you're going to not live in the joy or the happiness with God help for you with it, because when you believe it's yours, then you're going to find out certain things goes along with that. One of them is not joy. One of them is not happiness. They could be billionaires, trillionaires. They're not going to have the joy. They're not going to have... That's just a, an established fact. Some things money could buy. It could buy a house, but not a home. It, it could buy, um, uh, how to put it, a trip to, to London, but it can't take you one step into heaven. Money can do a whole lot of things. We listed in the first session all these things money can do, but things with money can't do. Uh, money can give you um, luxuries, but it can't give, give you peace and joy. It just can't do it. It's never designed for it. Money is a tool that we use for trade. We use for business. We use for investment. It's a tool that we can use. Um, and so it's very important to understand we, we again stress the other portion of it. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. And, uh, it does not say money is the root of all evil because money itself is neutral. It's what you do with it. It's what you make it to be. Uh, the love of money is the root of all evil. When you love money and you got to work for it and you got to not just work for it, you, you possess with it. Whatever you do, you're doing it for money. You're not doing it for well, God owns this. Lord, I've got to spend this according to what you say because it's your money. We have several stories in the Bible, Matthew 25, where the Lord Jesus uh, gives the story of the, the master who goes away. He endows everybody with X amount of talents. And he says, you, you, you. I think, you, I think it's pretty clear to all of us, all of us have not been given the same talents, the same gifts, the same abilities. Some people have been given more. But whatever God has um, sovereignly determined for us to have, it's enough for us. It's enough of what God wants you to have. So he didn't give you as much as Johnny. So sometimes, you know, Johnny gets up there and talk, and you're there sitting, boy, I want as much as Johnny. Uh -uh. And so that's one of the fallacies of life, that sometimes Johnnies get up and say, I made it so you could make it. That's true to a certain extent, but to very much a certain extent, God did not give everybody the same abilities and the same skills. And he gives them his talents, what he chooses to give them. Some was, one person had one talent, one person had two, another person had five. But he says, with your talent, go out, invest it, use it, and when I come back, there's going to be a checking day because they're my things I've given to you. Let me give you a couple of scripture verses. Psalm 24, verse 1. Somebody read that for me. Psalm 24, verse 1. Let me give you another scripture verse. Uh, Habakkuk 2, uh, 1, verse 8. Sorry, Habakkuk 1, verse 8. Okay? Psalm 24, verse 1. Habakkuk 1, verse 8. Sorry, I said Habakkuk. Hey, guy. Hey, guy, 1, verse 8. All right? And uh, so go ahead, read it. What you got? Okay, great. The earth is the Lord's fullness thereof. Everything is under God's control. He owns it. Now, sometimes we're trying to say we own it, but he owns it. Again, establish you. Haggai 1, verse 8. Haggai 1, verse 8. And use Deuteronomy 8, verse 18, too. Somebody go, Haggai 1, verse 8. Somebody read that. Haggai 1, verse 8. Please stand, read it for me. Go ahead. Okay, did I get that right? Hey, guy, one verse eight. Chapter one verse eight. Did I say it right or I got it wrong? 
Let me check here again. That's not the verse that we're looking at or we're looking for, I should say. Um, in the meanwhile, hey guy, one verse eight. Uh, what we got here? Yes, let's go up to the mountain. So I'm. That's my fault there. And let's go to chapter two, verse eight. Hey guy, two verse eight. So would you read that for me, please? I appreciate that. Go ahead, read that chapter two, verse number eight. What God says. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. That's what God says. Yeah. He says, that's mine. Now, I know a lot of men claiming it. And so God says it's his own. So we always got to remember God owns it all. There was another outstanding verse that I, I saw in, in Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. I want to read that quickly. And then one more verse, First Chronicles 29, uh, 11. Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. I'm just trying to establish that God owns it all. And I come to that conclusion every week. Even the very breath that you breathe, God owns it. So you don't come to the place where you say, well, this is my money and my this and I accomplished this. Well, you may end up saying it's my breath and God says, okay, let me take it away then. See what breath you have. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. Somebody read it for me. Anyone? Anywhere? Anytime. Go ahead. Thank you right there in his covenant. It is God who giveth you power to get what? Wealth. It's God. I know people keep on saying, well, I don't want God in this. I got my skills. I got my ability. I got this and that. And they feel somehow that it is them. But the word of God says it's God. One more scripture verse. First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 11. I think it's, I love this verse. This is, this is one of the juiciest verses in the Bible. Will somebody read that verse for me? First Chronicles 29 verse 11. Anybody else over here read the Bible? Okay, go ahead. Okay, all. God says all is his own. Don't miss the scriptures. And you can go from Genesis to Revelation. You'll see God keep on saying, it's all mine. It's all mine. I own the money when we think about money. I own the wealth when you think about breath. I own your breath. And still some people have difficulty saying, God helped me to do this. You know, They still feel and claim, I did this and I did that. So we want to quickly say that when we recognize that God owns it all, then we recognize what are we, what are we called? Stewards. What are stewards? Managers of somebody else's property. That's what we are. We are stewards. Money comes through us, money comes to us, and we're stewards. So as a steward and God is the owner, he is going to give, we have to give an account to him one day. I know people live life as if they're not going to give an account to God. I'm here to say you're going to give an account to God. You say, well, I get $20 a week. You're going to give an account to God for how you use that $20. Because whatever God has allowed you to have, you got enough. Okay? Um, we honor God by giving God first. We talk about the tithe. Tithe is how much? A tenth. We talk about giving to him first. Uh, from the first fruits of, of your, your offerings. We talked about um, the matter of God and his spirit saying, don't rob me. Um, you know the place to give. You know the house of God to give, Malachi 3, um, um, 8 and 9 and 10. You know what blessings to come as a result of your giving. And by the way, God didn't say these blessings come as a result of you giving just to uh, uh, for church alone. He has these things in general, but for the Christian, he says, you got church. You got the storehouse of the Lord. And he says, you, you got to do that. Okay? Um, we, we look at this, um, um, some several things I think we've already come to. If you're looking for contentment in money and possessions, will you find them? 
The answer is no. Okay? <laughs> that, I mean, that's clear through Bible. Even though we're going after it, and it's okay to go after it to a certain extent, but you're not going to find the contentment, you're not going to find the joy that you're looking for. You will never experience it. Um, uh, there was an Epicurean, uh, well, the Epicureans was a gentleman. Uh, it was named after a philosophy of a gentleman called Epicurean. And Epicurean said, to whom little is not enough, nothing is enough. And basically what he was saying that they're not going to find contentment in, in what they're looking for. All right, just quickly thing here. Um, true realities. When we talk about money, we're talking about saving it, and giving it, and spending it, investing it. True realities, though, is not that which results in 20, 30, 40, or 50 years. You say, boy, I got this money. This is going to roll me for the next 40, 50 years. This is going to roll my next generation for 40, 50 years. That's going to roll the next, next generation for another 100, 200 years. True reality is that's too short. So as far as Christians are concerned, true reality is that which lasts for how long? Eternity. Eternity. If you're investing in that which is only going to last 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 years, then you have fallen short. You must learn to take what you have and use it in time so that it would last forever. We, we come to the scripture verses which says, lay up treasures in heaven. You know, we'll talk about those at a needed time. But w if you have something that's going to last, you say, well, I'm straight. Next 50 years, good. 60 years, good. 70 years, good. That's not long enough. If you want a true reality, you want something that's going to last forever. So you can make investments down here that's going to last forever. But in the meanwhile, let me give you the, the information here concerning a, a gentleman who was, um, I, I think he has, has made a lot of investments here on this, in this world. And uh, I want to make sure you get, get an idea of um, who he is. And uh, let me get this download here. I got to read this. All right. Um, let me get this one. Warren Buffett. Anybody knows who Warren Buffett is? One of the world's leading millionaires. Billionaires. Okay. Um, how much? How much do we get to, to do a million? There must be a thousand, thousand. To get to be a billion. There must be a thousand million to get to be a trillion, <laughs> a thousand billion. Those are some staggering figures. I can't, I can't even fathom that. When you get past a few thousand, I lost. Warren Buffett has promised to give away 99% of his wealth. 99% of his wealth when he dies. Family charity that quietly focuses on, uh, to a uh, family charity that focuses on reproductive rights could get a huge uh, windfall. Okay? Uh, Warren Buffett, I think, starts from 2006. And um, right now he has an estimate remaining in 2022. $117 billion is already, and he said that $117 billion is already spoken for. In other words, he'll plan. He's 90 years old, 90 years old, and he says, I'm, I'm, I'm giving away all my money now. Anybody knows what he plans to live on? What he's been living on for the last 10 years, I think it is? How much? How much you would think? Anybody, make a guess. 10,000? No, that's too low. A week? Okay, that's too high. His thing is, he will live on $100,000. That's what he's been living on for the past few years. Now, for some of us, we'll say, boy, $100,000, we could, we could strike gold. <laughs> you know? But think about it. 
here's a guy giving away billions. And guess who he's giving it to? Anybody could get an idea who's the main person he's giving it to? Bill Gates. And he is saying, I'm giving it to somebody who's going to do something with what I give. You know, like God said to the folks, my mom, how much talents you got? I got one. How much talents you got? I got two. How much talents you got? Five. And then the, God says, okay, it's reckoning day now. The fellow with five, he multiplied. The fellow with two, he multiplied. The fellow with one, he didn't multiply. God said, take it, take it soon, take it. Because this, this principle of understanding that guess what? Yeah, so guess what? You're going to have to give. You're going to have to do what you need to do. And so we, as we go through this, let's see what the Corinthians says again. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right? So there's a major Susan Thompson Buffett Foundation, the major funder of abortion rights is preparing to receive up to $100 billion. Now, my friends, what am I saying? When you make an investment, if your investment only can last 100, 200 years, that's not long enough. So sorry. Your investment that you make or how you give should be something that lasts for how long? Eternity. That's why Jesus said you lay up for yourself treasure. Where? In heaven. So if we're going to one and 200 years and saying, boy, all my money is good for that, we're wasting time. We're falling short. So Warren Buffett has given away all this money. He's been doing this for quite a while. And, but the sad thing is it ain't going to value what he's thinking is going to value. He said, I'm giving it to Bill Gates. Bill Gates, they're going to do this, and they're going to do that. They're going to help charitable organizations, etc. But one of the organizations is major funder of abortion rights. And let me tell you something. He'll lose in eternity with that. He'll lose in eternity. That's, you know, reinterpreted as a major funding for murdering children. 2006, Buffett told the fortune that he would start giving 85% of his Berkshire Hathaway stock would eventually go toward five foundations. He planned to give more than 80% of shares to the Gates Foundation, which were, was the world's largest philanthropic organization at the time. Buffett also was also close friends with Gates, the Gates family. Buffett said he would hey, earmark $10 billion B shares from Berkshire Hathaway for the foundation. One million B shares for Susan Thompson, that's, that's his actual wife who had died, foundation. And 350,000 B shares for three foundations headed to each of his children according to letters to charity. Folks have been writing him from 2006. He's been giving it away, giving it away, giving it away, and he's been living on $100,000 from 2006. Hey, maybe some of us make more than him right now. You never know. We got some big shots here, you know what I mean? Amen. But I'm saying all that to say this as I wrap this up. Make sure that with you, as we talk about money, as we talk about finances, make sure and understand that what you're doing with this thing, what you're going to do with the thing, as you earn what you earn, you're going to earn it. And make sure that it is settled in your heart that what you're going to Remember the four things, save it, give it, uh, invest it. Um, we talk about those things. Um, when we talk about those things, we talk about make sure that it's going to connect so that it'll be something for eternity, something for eternity. So spending it, whatever, however. Okay, at this time, the presenter tonight is none other than Brother Mark. All right, so Brother Mark is going to present tonight. We call him the rookie man, so he's nervous. So Sister Rochelle, 
I, I go on. I don't know why I said that. I shouldn't. Have, I shouldn't approve you that already. But go ahead. Go ahead. So, who shall so good night, everybody. So welcome to this Wednesday night session. But Mark is very nervous, so we got to stall to give him some time, okay? So in the meantime, Sister Deborah is going to come and speak to us about her small business. But before Sister Deborah comes, because Mark is trying to pull up something on the screen, I would like to say congratulations to all of the graduates and intending graduates, reminding you, as well as us older folks, that education is always a journey and never a destination. So as long as we're alive, we can learn from each other. And we've been pulling from our fundamental circle during this time to present in these seminars. But I do want to showcase one of our youth who is not following in the business trend, but every year Central Bank has a competition where they seek to highlight paintings and art work from high school students. This year, I am pleased to advise that the Central Bank 2023 winner is a member of New Testament Baptist Church. So I would like, she's not here, but I want to highlight her. She's a member of our youth choir. She's also my niece, but she is Kendronique Ferguson. Her work is also now displayed in Dongaluk Studio as one of the up and coming artists in the Bahamas. So I just want to encourage her to continue to do well and to use her talent for the honor and glory of God. I hope the rest of you all listened to the government communication today. It was very exciting to me. Um, I actually listened to the entire thing while I was working. So let me say that while my boss watching. I was working and listening. But one of the things that was highlighted was the rent to own program that this government is seeking to invest in. And so for those of you who don't know what rent to own is, in the financial services, we have recognized that there are persons that can pay rent but they can't come up with the down payment and the closing costs because that can run into a couple thousand dollars. So with the rent to own scheme, you will pay a monthly fee. A portion of that monthly fee goes to rent because you will be in the, in the people building and the other portion would go to your down payment and closing costs. So at some point when it's time to purchase the home, you would have already saved in the bank your down payment and closing cost fee, which is a great initiative if they can get it off the ground. And so that's something you young people, please keep your eyes on. Make sure that credit bureau is here. Those of you who like credit cards, do not miss those credit card payments. Do not miss those loan payments. Um, try and if you are self-employed, keep your financial deposit in the bank. For those of you who are working, keep that steady job. So when they do, and if they do, ever offer this initiative that you would be successful in applying for one of the homes. Um, another thing the government also said was that they were giving tax ex concession for a building. Uh, owner occupied home up to 300,000. That is also a good initiative. You can bring in building supplies. And I think that 300,000 is there because they've now moved the real property tax. So if your home is valued under 300,000, you would not be taxable. So I um, want you all to keep abreast of all the legislations that are going on. and find out how you will be affected. Having said that, I will see if Sister Deborah is ready. If she is not ready, then I will tell you all about the other initiative that they have, the um, triplex. So there are tax concessions as well for persons who want to occupy triplex building where you can get a um, tax concession. With the 300000 what the government is seeking to do is to partner with private partners so that they, so you, it wouldn't just be what we call government home or the Arawak homes. They now can partner with other financial institutions to build homes up to $300,000 that you can now qualify for getting concessions from the Bahamas government. So there are some great initiatives. Um, we, I just hope that young persons take advantage. This is the time to get your life insurance. While life insurance is cheap, you all have no comorbidity. Com so um, when you go to the bank, you will need life insurance to cover the balance of your loan. You want to save while you're young, so you will have some funds to give to the bank. And if you are young, you can get a longer term. So you can get a 30-year mortgage as opposed to a 15 or 20-year. The 30-year mortgage would allow for lower payments. And then you have the option of, of making more payments if you are able to. 
And at some point, I will do a training session on that, paying off your mortgage, the advantages, the disadvantage of, of the banking and home loans as well. Father Atwell had asked about the digital currency, so we are speaking to somebody um, who will come in and speak on digital currency. And then we also had a lot of interest on wills and dying without a will, dying with a will. A lot of people didn't really understand, and so, and they had a lot of questions. So we are, Melissa and I are going to tag team again, and we will do a session on wills for, for you. And again, if there's anybody that has a topic that they would like us to address, please see us. We would be more than happy to address that topic. I'm glad to see Brother Finley in here again. Last time, Brother Finley was hosted, and he was in here, so I have to host. And so in court, you know, normally when you go to court and an attorney in another court, you just say, my Lord, I'm holding brief for, and you hold that attorney. So I'm holding brief for Brother Kwame until he comes back. So um, I see Sister Deborah is here, so she can come. Um, Brother Wilton say, let her go first, let her talk. So she don't check in out, so I'm following the, the, the leadership of the house. Then we, we stole in so Mark could build up his courage, so y'all please give him your support. <laughs> oh my goodness, a pleasant good evening all. Um, I've been asked to talk about um, my business venture. Um, I have two of those. But I will start with the one that applies to my career. I have been a nurse. It's kind of loud, close. I've been a nurse now for, I think, October, yes. October will make 39 years that I was a registered nurse. I worked um, a number of areas in this country. <laughs> I um, Initially, I, when I trained as an RN, I was fortunate to be one of those nurses that I think we, we say. Our group says we were that intelligent, we were that good, <laughs> that we were chosen by the principal nursing officer to be the group of nurses that would go straight into training for midwifery. That's nurses who deliver babies. So we did a four-year rather than a three-year training at that time um, and went straight into midwifery. As a result, when we finished it, half of us went to community, half of us went to hospital to do delivery. I only spent a, a couple of years, maybe two, in the community clinics and the family islands, and then I went back into hospital where I spent most of my career on maternity ward delivering babies. Um, the latter part of my career was kind of rough for me. I think it would have been around the 20th year that a supervisor came that could not stand me. And she made it her daily chore to, every day she came to work, she irritated me. It was every day. I went on night duty to stay away from her, and she would wait for me in the mornings when I get up. It was horrible. I came to church smiling, but I was suffering at work. It was really bad. I remember one morning I, I was driving, coming from work, and um, I was listening to a radio station, very, very listen, hurting, like, Lord, I can't do this. Why? Because we're doing this thing pro bono, all on our own, not connected to anybody or anything. And um, the wife called me, and she said, um, are you registered with any of the insurance companies? And I said, no. So she said, um, well, we're going to have to find another company. I say, don't call no other company. Give me some days. <laughs> and I pick up that phone and I start to call around. And I knew a friend who was doing nursing care without an agency and getting paid from insurance companies. So I called her and I was like, girl, I get one case. And we're not registered with an insurance company. What do I do? She walked me through the process. I called that woman. I say, give me two more days. And I was able to register myself, not a company as a provider, healthcare provider with Colina Insurance Company, and that is where the process started. To date, during COVID, I started to get doctors I don't even know calling me. Do y'all take care of COVID patients at home? Some of these patients don't want to go into hospital. And I was like, I don't want to expose nobody. We don't have malpractice insurance. I don't want to expose nobody to COVID, and then something happens. How I can pay the family? I, I can't do that. And it wasn't until almost towards the end of the COVID period, I decided to, you know, I could take on this COVID case. And we were called in to take care of uh, two sisters, both of them over 90 with COVID, and that would have been our first stint with COVID. To date, Brother Mark, you could put up our page, please. I, um, Blessed Beginning, that's my page there. Blessed Beginning, Midwifery and Nursing Agency. Some of you, if you go to some funerals, you would see 
Um, that company listed as the healthcare company that took care of their relatives at home. Um, we take care of, um, we give hospice care to persons that may have cancer or something else that may be dying. We take care of the elderly. We also take care of, if there's, if you have a relative and you just need a caretaker, we provide caretaker for you. Um, we also do midwifery care if you're pregnant and you need somebody to help you with, um, we, we can, we can take care of you during your pregnancy if you are considered low risk. We have midwives that will take care of you during your pregnancy and then refer you to a doctor. Or another nurse, the same nurse that got me registered with the company, she now has a birthing center. We can refer you to her for delivery. Um, like I said, we do elderly care, geriatric care, pediatric care, wound care, diabetic foot. If somebody has a diabetic foot and, and needs that taken care of, um, we can take care of that as well. If you want bloods taken off to go to the lab and you don't feel like going to the lab and you want us to come into the home and take it off, we'll do that for you as well. We put up a lot of our patients who um, the doctors say, um, you need to be admitted to hospital and they, I don't feel like going to that hospital. Those doctors give me a call and we come in and we set up a hospital right in your house. We set up IV care, we give you whatever medication that doctor needs, we set up and we give you that right there. Um, we provide around the clock care, 24 hour care. Um, to patients as needed. To date, um, I have 44 registered nurses working for me, 17 registered nurses, and PCAs, patient care assistants, about 20 of those. God is good. God is awesome. <laughs> and uh, we're planning to expand our company. Um, we're now in talks with um, BAIC again to um, expand our company so that we can be able to do more. Um, that's it. That's, that's me. That's my company. It's a, it's a partnership business. I'm in partnership with Anika Johnson, my colleague, Oral's godmother. <laughs> We've been friends for a number of years. Boy, we buckheads in the beginning, really buckheads because the personality difference, but we're settling down now. <laughs> we are surely settling down now and I'm grateful to God for that. And I have registered nurses and trained clinical nurses that are trained and registered in the Bahamas and so you have no fear of whether you will get professional care. Professional care is available to you. I have, my company has been from Yellow Elder to over Paradise Island to where my husband always showing you where Oprah is, where Oprah houses are. We've been in there. We've been in Life of Key. We've been all over the Bahamas delivering care. Um, we are able to deliver care to the poor and then to the not so poor those who can really, really afford it. And we are registered with every insurance company in the Bahamas. A lot of you may not know that you can get home care and that your insurance provide it because I don't think insurances will let anybody know that you can get this care at home as well. But most insurance companies pay for home care. Some of them, the, we have a patient now whose company paying, is paying 100% as long as it's reasonable and customary. And um, some of them, they will limit the amount that they give you, but they will give you some help to give you care at home. And so that is my first company. Now, my two daughters, I have encouraged them to not depend on the government salary. Dara <laughs> is guidance counselor in, in Andros, and Dior is um, immigration officer. Injured herself and been off for a year. During COVID, somebody said to Diara, Diara, um, you cook so well, why don't you open up a catering business? And um, he even gave her the name, D's Catering, and she was like, hmm, I think I better do that. <laughs> and so she started a company called D's Catering. Um, I think, can you put up the next picture, please? I think I'm going ahead of myself. Put up the next picture, please. I think it's supposed to be D's, D and D's Children's Clothing. Put that one up for me, please. That is Dara's company. Dara, um, when she came from college, you know, Dara was, um, Dara was unable to graduate because of um, the pandemic. And she had to come home and finish her um, education online, could not go back and do her one year, um, whatever they just do. No, the one year after she finished, where they school? Ah, that's it, OPT. She couldn't go and do her OPT. And so I said to Dara, I said, come work with me at Ranfully Home for Children. And um, she applied and was accepted and was working, Mina was working together at Ranfully Home for Children. And during the pandemic, she and I were sitting down one day because actually 
Whenever we had an outbreak of COVID in the home, Dara and I lived in the home for two weeks. And so that while we were living there, we sat there and we were talking and I said, Dara, let's open up a children's clothing store. And she said, um, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and I remember us just sitting right outside um, while the kids were inside and we just started to get a logo together and set up and uh, let me put a plug in here. Um, Sister Cheryl Major's daughter, Angelica Major, that girl could do a logo. She made this logo for us. She made Diora's logo. She did the logo for, she assisted with the logo for um, my um, nursing services as well. So I, I'm going to put a plug in for her. She's very good. She will make stickers. She makes stickers. She make whatever we ask her to do, Angelica goes ahead and do that. So she's really good with that kind of stuff. So that is, that's our logo, courtesy of her. We um, went and got that business started, and we have been, we do delivery. It's a home-based business. We do delivery, and so that is Dara's business. I'm trying to get her to focus more on, on that than um, in order to prepare for her future, that her future will be, that she'll have what they call um, money coming in while she sleeps. So that's that. We're working on that. And then the last one, excuse the photo for Dior own. Dior has wild... Um, my girls are chunky, like their mommy. And so it's very difficult sometimes to find decent clothes, to find any kind of clothes. Put up the next photo for me. And so Dior decided, because it was so difficult for her to find clothing for ladies of her size, to open up a store as well. And um, we have delivered both of these stores. Okay. Both of these stores, I don't think you could get it up, but both of our stores have uh, delivered to most family islands in the Bahamas as well. And so um, whenever people, we're online, both of them are online. Um, you can go online, research the stores. We have sales a lot because what we try to do is to buy things that are on sale. Um, we don't buy things at full price. I can wait for that to go on sale. And when that go on sale and sometime a sale on top of sale, then I'll buy that and then sell it. And try, we, we don't, we're not trying to make a killing, just a little bit of a living. And so a lot of our, Dior and I were laughing today because there's a customer, a Haitian lady, every time that sale sign goes, that woman calls for a sale. She goes, nobody have sale like you. <laughs> so we have had some customers that will consistently call us and consistently um, patronize um, our businesses. And so those are the three businesses I'm trying to prepare my children for, um, for their future, to have a brighter future. I know my mother struggled. My mother really, really struggled. <laughs> my mother was an intelligent woman, but she got pregnant while she was a monitor in the island. They used to call them monitor. They used to take the intelligent children out of the class and teach their pairs to prepare them to be teachers. And so she was one of those, but she got pregnant and came to Nassau and then had to make a living and became a single mother of nine. And I remember my mother, she was an entrepreneur, even though it may not have been called that then, but she used to do straw work. She was a housekeeper, and when she came home from housekeeping, she would come home and she would sit and stitch those bags and leave them there and tell us, now when y'all come from school, carry those bags on Bay Street. But then I always seemed to have been the one to go and do it because nobody else wanted to do it. So it always fell on me because I didn't want to be disobedient and I didn't want her to come home and eat those bags there. So I used to grab those bags after school and jump on the bus, go and sell those bags so we could have had extra steel because my mother used to make $30 a week. Think about that. $30 a week to feed nine children. And $22 was for rent. So... $8 out of that, she had to find a way to make that help her out with these nine children with deadbeat fathers, sorry to say. But anyhow, the entrepreneurship started with my mom, and my mom showed me that we don't have to depend on one income and showed me what we can do if we use what we have in our hands. The name of my business, Blessed Beginning, came from um, in the book of Exodus chapter 1 when um, the midwives were told to kill the first male that was born and the midwives did not do it. And when asked by Pharaoh why they did not do it, they said because the, the Egyptians, the, the, the women were more lively than, than the Egyptians, and they delivered before they got there. Of course it was a lie, because they just did not want to kill them. And because they honored God by not killing those babies, God blessed them and gave them houses. And so, hence the name of our business, Blessed Beginning. We were blessed from the beginning as nurses. And so we've seen God do awesome work. I just went in today to, to the bank to increase our monthly potential because <laughs> our monthly potential is exceeding that which we have in the bank already. So we're going on our second increase of our monthly potential. So God has been good. 
and I expect him to be even better in the future. Thank you very much. Of physiotherapy to get her knee in order so that she can get her catering business back on par, but the plus size clothing is there. She's now out of stock. That's how quickly they go. Every time they come, they're gone. And so she's working on um, getting her knee together so that she can get her plus size, um, her catering business going. For If you have an event for 50 persons or under, reach out to Diara. Thank you very much. Brother Mark has come in. He's still a little nervous, you know. I'm trying to give him some time to get over that. But I actually like Sister Deborah's business. Some of you may not know. A couple of years ago, uh, one Sunday I fall asleep, and when I woke up, it was eight days later. I had a hundred thousand dollar bill when I woke up, and nearly gone back to sleep again. So I would tell you all, I wish I could have it. Well, my mom came and she she nursed me back to health, but I did not know about. You know, you could get a home care nurse. In fact, the doctor, um, they told me that my insurance covered 21 days in the hospital, 100% care, and I got discharged on the 21st day. So they covered 100% of my, um, my care in doctor's hospital. My doctor decided he made enough money, so he wrote off a portion of my bill and said, pay the, pay the rest when you have chance. So I, I actually do like the health care. So Brother Mark is coming. He's getting over that nervousness. Um, so what we can do is we can call him again to talk another time. So we have to break him out of that. Good night, everyone. So before I start tonight, I have one, one brief video that I want to show of the barbershop. Mario, play it, please. Okay, that's it by you. I'll can turn on the light, please. Welcome back, Brother Komi and Sister Jen. Uh, so before we start tonight, I would like to have a quick prayer before we go into the message. It's not a message, a topic. That most heavenly gracious Father, once again, I pray that you would be with me tonight, Lord. Uh, I know with you that I can do all things. Uh, so I pray tonight, Lord, as I'm about to deliver this message, that you may just be with me. In your precious name I pray, amen. amen. So for those who don't know me, my name is Baba Mark Dardis, but my real name is Mark Baptiste. I come from a family of five. It's me, my brother, my sister, uh, my stepdad, and my mother. But when I was in school, Unfortunately, my stepdad ended up passing away. Me and my brother, we started working at a young age. I started packing back 
from grade three. I started parking bikes from grade three. But that's not what we're here today to discuss. I'm here to just give you a brief tour on how I come from uh, being unemployed, working on commission, and then moving on to being self-employed, and then eventually owning my own business. This whole story started with a man by the name of Mr. Hanna. Mr. Hanna was a teacher at Telios Christian School. He is an excellent math teacher. I think he still is due tutoring, so if you need any tutoring for your kids for maths, Mr. Hanna is the man. So Mr. Hanna at Telios Christian School, he would cut every once in a while after school, me and a few other students. And sometimes I would just go in to observe the way he's doing it. Now, mind you, I'm trying to pick up this trade, but I never had it in the back of my mind to say, you know what, I want to make a career out of this. I'm about to come out of school, don't know where I want to go or what I want to do. Now, I would hear everyone in school talking about what college are they going to. Some, of, some would say they're going to this college and that college. But me, I don't know what I wanted to do with my life. Unfortunately, I wasn't really that intelligent when I was in school. So college wasn't in back of my mind. So when I would hear people talk about it, I would pray to God that they don't ask me any question. Because to tell you the truth, if they were to ask me a question, I wouldn't know how to answer it truthfully. As time go by, I'm about to come out of school, don't know where to go, don't know how to go about going about this life that I'm, uh, that I'm coming out of school. So I had something in mind. I wanted to go to college at first. But like I said, I'm not really that college material. So I had to figure out another way. I started studying, but me, I'm that type of guy who like to do things last minute. So that college part didn't actually work for me. Now as my life goes on, I'm still in school, I'm parking bikes, about to come out of school. But I'm only parking bikes because I needed to help my mother financially. Like I said, my stepfather passed away and she needed money every once in a while from me to pay her bills. As time go by, I still don't know what I wanted to do as a career. I came out of school. I stayed at a home for a few months. I got tired of it. I used to work out, but I got tired of it. There was no cable, no Wi-Fi at home. I got tired of it. I went out looking for a job. I went to a few places. I get a few uh, applications. I mean, what do they call it again? I, application, I get a few application. And when I get those application, I would fill them out and then I would carry it back. And some, and the, some of them would say, you know what, they're not hiring right now. So I would continue going, going, asking around to see where as if I could find a job. Well, that didn't work out. I started getting frustrated not knowing how to go about it. So I started praying, hoping that God would send something my way. Now, when I was in school, I, I kind of wanted to be an electrician, but it wasn't something that I was thinking about when I was coming out of school. So that thought came to mind. God brought that thought to mind. And I was trying to find a way to pick up that trade. Now, I don't have any money to go to BTVI. So I need to figure out a way to pick up this trade. I came up with an idea. I said, you know what? I'm going to go around and ask a few individuals like, if they could allow me to work for them for free and in return, they teach me the trade. Now, some people that I went to, they said, you know what? They can't hire me. Some would have other excuses. So, now, I'm, I'm starting all over again. I don't have a job. I don't have a job, and I'm trying to pick up a trade, but I can't pick up that trade. I started praying that God will send something my way, that he would give me an idea or something. As I continue praying, 
still not knowing what to do or where to go. I was watching a video on YouTube. This video said, if you wanted to pick up a trade, the first thing you must do is get the tools. Now, I still didn't know what to do because I don't have that much money. So I called Mr. Hanna. When I called Mr. Hanna, I end up calling, I end up remembering that I was trying to pick up barbering. Then I end up calling Mr. Hanna. I called Mr. Hanna, I get on the phone with him. I said, hey, Mr. Hanna, how you doing? Uh, can you help me with something? I need you to tell me where you end up getting the machines from. I need some cheap machines, so something to start me off with. Mr. Hanna came in the next day, and then he ended up taking me to the store, and I get a pair of, I get a pair of machine. I started cutting myself, and then eventually my neighbor started letting me cut him. Now, mind you, it's been a few months, I haven't been working, bills are stacking up on my mother, and I need to figure out ways to make money. So, as I continue, as I continue about, as I continue about with life, trying to see if I could pick up this trade, I end up going to a barber shop. Me and Hervins end up going to a barber shop. When we reached the barber shop, I spoke to the owner, and then I asked him, said, said if he have any chairs available. It was only him in the barber shop at that time. So he ended up accepting me. The next day, I came to work. Now mind you, I'm a barber, but not a good barber as yet. I don't really consider myself as a barber as yet, because I wasn't really that good. So I was hoping that he could help me. So every day that I would go in, I wasn't making no money as yet. Every day that I was going, because of what he was doing for me, I would render my service to him for free. I would come in, I would sweep the floor, clean the bathroom, uh, mop the floor, and then I would go home. One day, I came in, and he was still cutting. One day when I came in, we, I worked the entire day, and it was time to close. And I said to him that I have to go to church. Since you're still cutting, I'm going to mop the floor, clean the bathroom, and then all you have to do is deal with your area when you're done. He looked at me with rage, and he said, if you leave here tonight, you know you're fired, right? If he only knew making that statement would ruin our relationship. There was a friend of mine who used to work for him. I called him up. I said, hey, I need a new location to go to. Do you have somewhere else that I could go and work? Well, he take me to Royal Spa to come at him, and then come at him end up hiring me. The next day, I pack up my stuff, and then I end up leaving Caesar. And that was where the journey of Royal Spa began. When I went to Royal Spa, I started working on commission. Now, for those of you who don't know what commission is, commission is I make the money, and whatever I make at the end of the week, they give me a portion of what I make. Now, like I said earlier, I'm a new barber. I don't really know much about barbering. And the store that I went to, there's no customers coming in because it's a new developed, it's a new developed store. So I would go in every single day. I would sit down from 7 o'clock in the morning to, from 7 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the evening. And there would be no customers that would show up. They wouldn't cut no one, and I, and I wasn't cutting no one either. But on Saturdays and Fridays, it would be fast for them, but not me. So I needed to figure out a way to generate an income. Like I said earlier, I need, because I needed to help my mother. So I came up with a plan. I started standing outside. Every customer that would walk past, I would say, good evening, sir, how you doing? My name is Mark. I, we, just look, we just reached you at this store. I was wondering if you could come to me and let me give you a haircut, you won't regret it. I promise you, you won't regret it. Despite my effort, I didn't have no customers at the end of the week. 
I end up continuing on with that approach for a few more weeks. And when I saw that it wasn't working, I had to come up with another plan because I'm in need of money, like I said earlier. I would come to church every Wednesday night and I would pray at home seeking for ways to make money so I could help my mother. God finally answered my prayer. He had given me an idea. I started going in the neighborhood and I went to the kids' parents and I said, I would like to cut your kids for free, but you will have to let me cut them with putting a free design in their head. Some parents agreed, but some parents did not agree. But to me, it didn't matter. All I wanted is to find ways to get better at that time because I needed money as fast as possible. So I would continue cutting the kids. I would continue giving the kids free cuts. There is a scripture that in the Bible that says, faith without works is dead. So I was trying to do as much free cut to get better, to get better and better and better as time go by. I did this for a few weeks and I began getting better. I went on the media, I post up a cut. I started getting great feedback. People started messaging me. I get a few customers that week and the money that I made, it wasn't much, but I was grateful for it. Over time, the money started coming in. This was the print. That was the point when they transitioned me to being self-employed. Kamar and Corey called me in and they sat me down. And they said, Mark, well, I see that you haven't been trying. In my mind, I'm saying, what do you mean I haven't been trying? Standing outside, posting up on the media, and you saying, I haven't been trying. They said that you haven't been trying. We need you to bring more money in. So they're going to take me off commission. Wow. Another stage of my life that I have to overcome again. Because now if they take me off commission, if I was making $200 a week, only $50 out of that coming from, to me now. Before then, it was 100, and, uh, 100 for them, 100 for me, because I was working 50%. 50% for me, 50% for them. But now that they're taking me off commission, sometimes at the end of the week, I don't even know if I'm going to make $50, or I don't even know if I'm going to make the money to be able to pay them. But they didn't care about my concern. They wanted their money and they wanted it now. <laughs> Even if they could have at least said, you know what, Mark, I'm going to start you off with $50 this week, then eventually it's going to be $75, then $100, and, and it goes on until it reached $150, I, I would have liked it. It would have benefited me greatly. But since they didn't care, I still needed to figure out a way to pay them. The book of Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean on, lean not to thy own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. So I needed to find ways to make money, so I needed to put my trust in God that he's going to help me to overcome it, like he's been doing. I started messaging majority of the young people that was on Facebook that was famous. I said, look, if you come to me, I'm going to give you a free haircut. I'm going to give you a free haircut. But in return, I need you to post this on your page, and I'll post it up on my page. OK, so that part started working. Sometimes I still would struggle to pay the bill now. But eventually, everything started going the right way. The money started coming in. I was grateful that they did not keep me on commission. Because now it means they would have been getting 200. When I'm making 400, they would have been getting two, and I getting two. So I was grateful for that. Now, how I became a business owner. The second store that I was to, which was Royal Spa, the two owners couldn't come into an agreement. So what happened was is that they shut down the store. 
Kamal had a bus at that time, so we started working on the bus. Working on the bus, everything was going great there, but then his girlfriend was about to move on the island. So he wanted to carry, he wanted to carry the bus with him on the island. So now me and Zaya needed to find a new spot. So he carried us downtown, and when we went downtown, we started working. Everything was going great. Tourists coming in, we charging them extra money. So all that was going great. But, but what had happened when we was there is we was making great money from the tourists, but when the tourists don't come in, our clientele from uptown, because of parking, sometimes their cars would get towed or they would have to pay for parking. So that part right there wasn't going to work out because I started losing my clientele from uptown. When the tourist is not coming in, I need my clientele from uptown. So realizing that that wasn't going to work, I've made the decision to move. When we moved on Markey Street, uh, there was a salon and a barber shop there. When we moved on Markey Street, things was going well there. I went to the owners, so I make a proposal. But that didn't work out, so I continued working under them. A few months later, Kamar came in town. He started discussing the idea of me opening my own business. He asked me if I had any thought of it. Well, to tell you the truth, I never had any thought of that in the back of my mind, because the only thing now that I was trying to do was buy my mother a home. Because I feel as if, like, if I did buy a home, it would take a big load off of me with paying the rent every month. And I could, I could accumulate more money in my bank account. However, Kamar sat me down, and he explained to me the potential of owning my own business. Now, that sounds great. Now, mind you, this Kamar poison, he had a bad history with business partners. Now, I knew these things. But in my haste to make more money, I jump at it without even thinking. So we went in, me and Kamar went in to the business together. We went and we paid the landlord. When we paid the landlord, Kamar came to me after we paid the landlord and he said, Mark, what I need you to do is, is spend your money to deal with the rest of the stuff for the business after he paid for the rent, and then eventually I'm going to pay you to get into the partnership. Well, like I said, due to his history, I didn't want to do it, but I had, come, I had Zaya and I had Gina with me at that time. So since I didn't want to do it, I went around looking to see if I could find another spot so me and them could go in. But when I went certain places, what they would say is that they could only take one or that they would only take two. Since, since Zaya and Gino just started barbering, I was the one who was feeding them, so I needed them to be with me. Not being able to find a place for a three of us to go, I had no choice. So I continue on with the business. I purchased the tiles. I purchased the tiles. I got someone to paint the place. Uh, I ordered the chairs, get the stations, get someone to lay down the tiles. Now, after we finished doing all of that, we moved into the place. Now, business was booming. Everything was going great. It's four of us, including me. After everything was going great, a few months later, Kamar came to me again. Kamar came to me a few months later. He suggested that you make the money that you spend from the business and then you could let me in. I was full with rage. What do you mean let you in? So you mean I spent all my time and effort building this business and you want to leeway in? I was angry at that time. I lost my temper. I went home. The next day when I came back to the barber store, what I didn't tell y'all earlier is that his girlfriend name was on the lease. So since his girlfriend name on the lease, they had me kicked out of the plaza. Boy, oh boy. 
I didn't know how to handle that at that moment. I felt like a volcano at that moment. I felt like I was about to erupt. Now, knowing my past, some things that I used to do back then started clicking in. I didn't know how to deal with the situation, but I was praying to God, please guide me before I do something that I will regret for the rest of my life. As time go by, I called Brother Kwame. Brother Kwame started assisting me to see if we could gain back the barber shop. But that part was not working. Lizzie came to me. She just had gotten her ASU jaw. She gave me $3,500. I did not want that money. What I needed was the barber shop that I built with my hard earning money. That's what I needed. With everything going on, I needed to clear my head. I remember Brother Kwame talking about a trip. So I called Brother Kwame and said, if he's still going on the trip, I would like to come. I went on the trip with Brother Kwame. After the trip, we returned. When I returned, I still needed to figure out a way to gain back my store. While I was seeking for advice on how to get my store back, I had to cut at home. But cutting at home, I was uncomfortable. So I moved to another barber shop, which was Elite's on Wolf Road. When we moved there, I'm trying to figure out ways to get my store back, went to a lawyer trying to see what we could do. But what would happen? Me spending my money on this lawyer, Every time we go to court, the judge would ask him, did the, the judge would ask, did they reach to an agreement? All I would hear is, no, Your Honor. And then they take us outside, and then him, my lawyer, and his lawyer, they sat down on the side, and then they discuss things. I don't know what they're talking about. And then they come back to me, and then they saying one thing, Seeing all of that was not working, I did not know what to do. I had to come to reality that I can't get this barbershop back. And in order for me to get it back, I might have to do something stupid. And doing something stupid might lead me into more trouble. One day, I was listening to something. I heard someone says, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and to discover that prisoner is you. I had spent so much time worrying about this guy, how I'm going to get my store back and how I wanted to hurt him. I forget about my personal life. I forget everything that I, could have, le that I have learned from that experience. I realized at that moment I spent so much time reflecting on it that I don't even know where to go or what to do. So I realized being angry and wanting revenge had only caused more pain. I stopped my entire life for this person, so I have to figure out a way to forgive him and to forgive myself. Because I knew who he was. I knew who he was. I knew what he was capable of. And I, I still allowed myself to get into business with him. Some people might rightfully question, why you allow Kamar to sign? Why you allow Kamar girlfriend to sign that lease? I will admit that I made a foolish decision let me tell you something. If I had to do the same exact thing over again, guess what I would do? The same exact thing all over again. During that time, I discovered something about myself that I did not know. I may have lost all that money 
But I discovered that, Mark, you could open up a business by yourself. You're the one who buy the tiles. You're the one who buy the chairs. You're the one who purchase the stations. You're the one who build the bench. You could open up an establishment by yourself. You did not believe that you could have do it. But here it goes. God showed you that you could have do it. So instead of reflecting on what you lost, look what you gain. You gain knowledge. With that experience, God showed me that I could actually be successful. God allowed me to go through all that shuff. God allowed me to go through all that suffering, all that pain, just to show me that I am more than capable than I think that I am with Him. Today, my eyes is open. I can see clearly what he was doing and why he was doing what he did and yes i had an experience where i lost but i had an experience where i lost to win my journey began like job he lost everything but my journey also end like job the first thought that i was too I had four barbers, including myself. Now, the store that I have now, I have seven barbers. Amen. The store that I was to before, the rent was way higher, but now, the store that I'm into now, it's lower. In life, there's moments when God break you in order to elevate you. I never imagined in the back of my mind owning my own business. Today, I can proudly say that I am a successful business owner and moving on to other things for the future. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how Mark transitioned himself. This is how God helped Mark to transition himself from being unemployed to working on commission, then being self-employed, and then eventually now I own my own business. The truth is, all of you here, you could do it too. Like I said, I had nowhere in the back of my mind that I could have do all of this, but God showed me. It might have been hard, it might, it might have been a lot of pain that I went through to learn this lesson, but I'm glad for it. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. So that he did an Good night. He did an awesome job for somebody who was scared. It, it was great, informative. Do y'all have any questions? See, he broke off running, so y'all don't ask him no questions, right? So if y'all have any questions for him or Sister Deborah? No questions? Okay. So Pastor will come. Um, we will um, come back again next week. Um, so I've, I have well, Pastor come, and I have a, a nephew who does cut hair. So my brother, now y'all know I have two brothers, right? So I have a brother on the police force and one on the defense force. 
my brother on the police force, he chunky. But every time he see me, everything go wrong in my life is because I do fuck. So I was trying to get back at him, and I asked him, my nephew, well, if you cut his hair, could he get a discount because he don't have much hair? And you know he have this big boss what? So could he pay half price, you know? But he told me he got to pay full price. I mean, I don't know why barbers have charged people full price when they don't have the same hair as everyone else. So that was my question for Mark. But first, look. Uh, let me add something to it. Um, I can't give you the details, but there was somebody big in the world, the world of um, sports, okay, that came in. And when they came in, they selected who they wanted, and they called Mark. And they brought Mark out west, you know, big, big time. Say, we got all the stuff you need, but if you want to bring something, fine. And of course, the reason why I can't mention it is because they made Mark the sign that he's not going to, your agreement, you can't advertise me, you can't make any money from me, you can't, I'm going to pay you good, but you, you, you can't take this and put this on later on that you got me, world class athlete, top of the world. Uh, you can't do it. So he couldn't do it. So I can't mention what it was. But the fact is, the entire Bahamas, they pick on. He looked at what he saw on Facebook, and he picked Mark. So that, to me, that was just amazing, you know what I mean? And uh, that's a guy that's multimillionaire. So, you know, that's, that's just amazing. So if God's with you, boy, I tell you what, you get settled. Sometimes he put you through some trials and testings, and you get there for the glory of God. But you just got to be serious about it. Amen? And uh, I'm sure you enjoyed that. Enjoy it, Sister Deborah Owen, how the Lord opened up the trials, the testing, the situations again, again, and again. We see God in the background of all of this. Amen? And that's, that's how great our God is. Uh, switching gears now, I want to remind you concerning Friday. Some of you have been doing a great job. We're paying for some extra people to be with us on Friday. We appreciate that. We'll probably have a little sprinkle like we normally have all the time, uh, some rain here and there. But uh, Sister Jen, we depending on Sister Jen Genevieve, we depending on that food left, right, and center. Who all's cooking? Dior cooking too. I don't know who all cooking, but make sure all our peas and rice is there. All I want is some good crab, some good crab and rice. Oh yeah, I got I got to go, and uh, some fish. Uh, I know they'll have hot dog, they'll have drinks, they have stuff out there. And for the rest of you, could please come and just, just enjoy yourself, relax, spend some time talking with some of the young folk. I, I think it'll be a blessing and encouragement to them. Just 15 minutes of boat ride, nothing much. You got any money to spend, I mean to give? Say it again? Joya. Okay, Sister Joy, where's Sister Joy in the back there? Somebody, okay, good, you could give the money to her, or if you put it inside there, uh, you need to put on it, who, who are you giving it to? The 12, the, the older ones that. $12, 13 and above, and I think 12 and, what, what, 12 and below is $6, or what? Or what the price is? 13 $12. Now, when the, start from what age? Oh, 7 and up, okay, so, okay, good. So, make sure you got that. All right, so, yeah, for those of you that will be helping folk, um, appreciate your help. Some already have been putting in some to help different people who will be there. You don't have to, you're just paying for the boat ride. Uh, you don't have to worry about the food and everything and the island, et cetera, et cetera. Any other announcements I need to make? That's Friday coming, so we expect to go there for what time, Brother Wilton? Okay, and where are going to be we leaving from? Senior Frogs? No. Where? Not downtown at all. Okay, good. Okay, John Alfred Dock is the one before the bridge there somewhere? That's the one right opposite. Tourism, the right there. Just on Victoria Avenue. By Elizabeth Avenue. Okay, great, great. By Elizabeth Avenue, all right? So, all right, so we're trying to leave that one. That's the one I guess you get the little smoother ride up. Okay. Right. So, anyway... Uh, they need to connect with the bus drivers, bus workers, car drivers, because I know some people can be picking up people, sending for people, and uh, boy, to get as much people that intend to come. 
you probably have to be riding from 7 o'clock in the morning, so I know we can't do that. So if you can help us with getting some folks up there, it would be fine. Hello? Say it again. Now until about 4.30, we close around 4.30, 5 o'clock. When we come back, it's always daylight. Okay, so we're here, uh, 5.15. We've never, we've never stayed in the night at all. We've come in bright daylight, come into the dark, uh, have some fun. So it's about 4.15, 4.30, maybe as late as 5. So, so it's day of fun, day of entertainment. Getting down there. Okay. So we'll be, <laughs> we'll be, <laughs> we'll, we'll meet in um, uh, Porter's Key. So I remind you concerning that. So um, be on the P's and Q's. And hopefully if you can't come, you can sponsor someone. That will come, okay? Let's everybody stand. Don't forget, we have the next, that Sunday coming, Sunday coming, we have, we're celebrating the Lord's Supper. I want to remind you concerning Sunday after. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and the next Sunday is Father's Day. Uh, yeah, yeah, man, I want to crab. I'll eat that every day. Amen, amen. Okay, at the time, good to see Brother Kwame, Sister Jen. We didn't get the time to say anything as yet, but let's ask Brother Kwame dismiss us in prayer. Amen, praise the Lord.